So a bit of a different video format this time. I figured I'd do this live with a hands-on demonstration so you kind of see it step by step. So what we're going to be producing is this kind of normal setup for the face. To begin with, a few caveats. This is one of many methods. I've already shown one method, which is to just do smooth shading all across. It's like spherize the entire normals. That's like the most basic way you can do this. It's probably the easiest one and it might not give you like the exact results that you want, but it will work from any light angle and all this kind of stuff. Whereas this type of normal setup has a lot of limitations. So the first big limitation is the position of the light. So if I go to the light here, you'll see that it's at 90 degrees on the X and on the Z. This is where we rotate. So if I zoom out and look at the light here, you can see this is how it's rotating around. Now, if we were to rotate on the X, you'll find that it doesn't really work. It kind of pops in and it has some weird issues. Now, you can solve this with a lot of time and effort. Uh, you'd have to set up the normals to work in both on the like kind of let's just say the the z and the x axis so up and across so it can get very very complicated uh, there are some people that have achieved it and done a really good job the other thing is you'll need the right face geometry for it all to work smoothly speaking of geometry the other issue you'll have is in very certain circumstances like here you get all these kind of jagged edges. This is because some of the vertex normals aren't completely correct. If I were to go into edit mode here, you'll see that there's kind of this sudden kind of square area here when it sh you would expect it to just go along this line here, but it doesn't. And that's because every quad of your geometry consists of triangles. So there's going to be some unexpected artifacting, so to speak, as a result of how it calculates these triangles. This is the problem with having it smooth. So I'll show other examples in a minute where it's fixed. So there's fixed kind of lighting angles that you have. So as you turn the light, it pops in and out. That is kind of how they do it with Grand Blue Fantasy Versus and um, Guilty Gear Strive and stuff like that. But I wanted to try and achieve smooth shading. So this is kind of what I've produced. So outside of jagged edges is the other big issue with this, which is shape keys. So I've got a blink, basic blink setup here. So if I were to uh, move the value down, you'll see we've got these weird jagged edges here. See in certain places like here, it's a bit of a mess. The reason for this is every time you create a shape key or you modify the mesh, deform it in some way, it's the same with when you uh, set up a rig for your face. The normals are going to be recalculated. What you want your normals to do is stay in the same place, but they're not going to because it auto calculates them. That's why you get these horrible messes. So the solution to this only works in Blender. You won't be able to do this in Unity and you won't be able to do this in uh, Unreal. I think the only way you could probably do it is through like some advanced shader setup that I probably don't know about. If you want to solve this in Blender, the simple solution is to use a data transfer. So I've got here a copy of the face mesh. I've taken the eyelashes and the eyes out because they were causing a few issues. So what you do with this is you add a data transfer and then you pick the copied mesh, which is basically just the original mesh. And then you go down into your face corner data normals and you want to have it as a nearest face interpolated you'll see that now that's fixed there's still a bit of an issue here this is probably just because of how my normals are set up i haven't fixed like some of the underlying issues still but if i were to grab this now and rotate this all of a sudden that issue is now gone it's completely solved we still get a few kind of artifacting but that's just because i haven't really gone in and spent the time to fix a lot of these issues this is not to write off this kind of technique i think there is value to learning this because you are going to have to do normal editing in other areas. I think for the face, there is a better solution, which I'm going to show in the next video. However, I think it's still worth going through this and kind of explaining how you do this. And the other thing you have to consider is people in the industry, some of like the top tier, like with the arc system works when it comes to kind of anime character art in video games, they still use this method. Even though it's got all these shortcomings, they have methods to get around them. 
So I figured we'd have a look at a Grand Blue Fantasy versus character head here so we can see how the shading kind of works on this kind of model. So in shader mode here, you'll see we've got these weird kind of planes set up and as you rotate, everything looks a bit funky. See, in the middle, this area in particular is very standoutish. I mean, under here, it's a bit of a mess as well. But what you'll find is in these border areas, you've got a bit of a gradient. So if I were to open the actual editor mode, you see here we've got a light color and then here we've got a dark color and then a gradient in between. But this area here is a very set color and this area under here is like a, the set dark color. So this border has been set up with the intention of separating this plane from this plane. So the direction of the normals here will be pointing forward whereas the direction of the normals here would be pointing more out of like a 45 degree or 30 degree angle out this way. Uh, it's the same with the nose here. The nose is quite dark here compared to the surrounding areas. And then if again, you grab the light and rotate it, you'll see that again, this area here, this dark area here is shaded that way. So that's basically how these normals are going to work. With the way I've set it up, I've transitioned these areas a little bit more and created a bit of a blur in between that allows it to be a bit smoother. But by doing that, you end up with a bit more artifacting that you have to fix afterward. There's a lot of work involved with this as well. So the big problem you'll have is you need the right typology set up. Now, my typology isn't perfect. There's a few issues like around here, which I've just kind of botched together because I took my original mesh and then I essentially edited it to make it look the way it does. So what you're gonna have to be doing is using the knife tool and cutting these faces to create the shape. So I've actually cut along here, created this triangle area. And I created this kind of border grace area where it kind of, you, you're kind of separating this plane from this plane. The only reason we're able to have this kind of triangle area here is because of how this typology is set up. So that is the other huge issue with this method is you've got to change your typology to suit it. So i have reset the normals now. So this is back to how it would be auto generated. So as you rotate this, you just find it kind of has a bit, it looks a mess basically. So I'm going to show you how to do this without the plugin. It's very complicated. It takes a lot of time. And you're going to have to kind of get into the weeds with this and just mess around with it and try and work it out. So I'm going to show the process. I've got this face all split up. If you want to do it without a plugin, which I wouldn't recommend, but it, you can use this as a base. So you can set up a base somewhere to start from. Should we go to add and we press UV sphere? We set this to 11 and 11 and then set this to something quite small. So it's so you can put it over here. Then you want to have a material for this. I've just got a basic material that's a plain color, but it's using a cell shader with the same kind of setup for as the face. So the shadows are going to be the same. So now as I rotate this light, you can see this is popping in and out in certain areas. So this is going to be the center of the face. Then you've got kind of around the eye area and then the kind of this cheek area. And then this is the side of the face here. So in a way, if you spend enough time, you could use all these faces up and down as well to kind of create the curvature of the front of the face, like up and down as well. But I'm just going to do left and right because that's kind of the style I want to get. So the process is you select the face you want and you need to copy this. So you go to mesh, normals, copy vector. But if you right click this, you can add this to your quick favorites, which I've done here. It's the same with paste. So if I press Q now, I've got copy vector and paste vector. So I'm going to select this face here, uh, this one here, sorry. And I'm going to press copy vector. And I'm going to select these areas here. So I'm going to do this part of the face first. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the eyebrow yet. I think this is going to be a bit of a problem. You'll see that as we do this, these areas where there's a boundary between these two planes is where we have the most problems. You can, if you want, 
you can create a sharp along this edge. So the way you would do that is you select the edges um, in edge mode, select the edges, and then you right click and you mark sharp. And what sharp does is it separates these faces. So this face has four normals. So each corner is like a normal. And then this face also has four normals for each corner. But these ones in the middle are shared. But if you mark them with a sharp, then these end up, instead of being two normals here, two corner normals, it ends up becoming four. So then this face and this face are separated. So that's one way you can solve this. However, if you want to try and smooth everything out, that kind of method doesn't work uh, you know how it looked at the start of the video how I had it smoothly transition across you won't be able to do that if you're gonna mark everything with sharps so I haven't marked it with sharps so you'll see as I go through the process there's gonna be a lot of issues and this is why this whole method in my opinion is probably not the best method and the next method I'm gonna show next week or the week after whenever I get around to it that's going to be probably the best method but it also has its own shortcomings that this method does so we select this face here Q we copy the vector and then we're going to select these areas again if you've got your typology set up better than mine because mine's a bit crappy you'll have an easier time with this as well and then what you do is you press Q and paste vector now if we rotate this all of a sudden it's now popping in. This is the center, this is this area, and then this is this edge of the face. So I'm gonna copy this, I'm gonna select this area, and then I'm gonna paste this. So now you'll see we're already getting an issue here. Uh, the reason it might be doing that, it might actually be down to a sharp that's on my so if I were to remove this, you'll see there's actually a sharp here. That's why we've got this issue. So I need to remove that. Grab this, copy this. Select these. Again, I'm selecting this with L. With seam set down here. And then paste. And then select this one. Copy vector. Select this area here. Paste vector. So you see that this line here does suddenly move back. And that's again because these are sharing the same normal. So you'll see it pops in and then there's a slight transition across that face. And then it pops into the next area. So you need to pick the order in which you're going to apply these. If you haven't got borders set up like this area here, you, you're going to have to select, pick and choose. So for this side face, because the sphere, this is actually pointing this direction, we want a flat one. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to duplicate this. So to select and press D and then rotate this uh, minus 90. If we go up to here and we press this, so these are the, our face normals. So we can see which direction this is now pointing. This is pointing this way, which is the way we want it. So if I then select this and press copy, and then this area here, I'm just gonna turn these off because it's a bit distracting. And we press Q, paste. So what I'm gonna do now is the center of the face. So I'm gonna copy this one here. And I'm gonna select the center plane. And what I'm also going to select is this section here under the eye. And then it's just a case of pasting. I usually do these last because this is the, the area I have the most issue. So now, if we just turn this off, this will now pop like so. The other one that we haven't done yet is actually this plane here, which is the side of the nose. And I think this plane I tend to do as either this one here or this one. I think I'll go with this one. 
So you select the nose and then paste the vector. But now this is going to cause an issue because I should have done this one first. Now we've got too much of this happening around here. So what I'm going to have to do is copy this one again and repaste. And you'll see now when you, now I do this, I'm going to cause an issue along this part of the face. So again, you need to plan out. I'd say the order you need to probably do this is do the nose first, then do this plane, then do this one here, then the side of the face, then do the center and this triangle here. And then that should be it. So I'm going to have to redo these now. But that should, in theory, be our setup. So you do get a bit of this issue down here. That's just because of how my topology is set. You might want to make this kind of transition more like this. So this line that I've got here comes right down into the chin. Um, I'm fine with how I've set it up because I'll just edit it manually. But again, just something to bear in mind. Now, once you've done that side, you've got to do obviously the other side. So you've got to repeat the entire process over there. And that's essentially how you do it without using a plugin. And to do it, you, it might be worth doing this this way before you use a plugin. But what I've got here is a plugin called Abnormal. So you can get this from GitHub. I'll put a link in the description. It'll tell you how to install it. And what it's got is this nice little editor here that you can open and you can actually rotate the normals and do all these different, you've got all these different like algorithms and whatever to, to make it do what you want. So what I'm gonna do with this, which is gonna save a lot of time, is I'm going to select all of the face, all of half of the face, and that's why I've got this seam down the middle so I can do that. I'm going to go into the normal editor and I'm going to press symmetry, symmetrize on the X. Now, this should all be applied across the face now. So now we've got our normal set up in the most basic form. So now I have abnormal. I'm going to show you how the process I did to try and make it smoothed out like I have at the start of the video. So there's there's a lot of different techniques I use to do that. So with the central plane selected, I enter here. And what I actually did to create this kind of smooth transition is I first uh, went and chose um, normal target modes and use sphere eyes and then what it does is it creates this and then what you can do is if you press so your so if you press on the x over here it will align it and if you press g and uh press y i think it is you can move this sphere along the y-axis and i kind of roughly placed it at the back of the face so what this is going to do is it's going to slightly bow out the normals as you can see as i move it backwards and forwards this is what it's like now and then this is what it will look like the reason all these are pointing out is because of the plane of the nose that we set up as well so some of these normals are in like a weird position before i do this just i'm just going to align on the x so then they're all pointing forward and then we'll do it again. So then when this, this will stop popping now and it'll start to slide across like this. So that's one technique I use to try and smooth these out. But it, the problem is the more you do this, you might mess something up and end up, because it, everything's very uh, fiddly, to, like it's probably the best word to describe it. Everything's very fiddly. So you could easily set this up in a way that you don't want it. And then you're in a position where you've got to try and fix it. What I also did to smooth them out is I also used there's somewhere in here, smooth selected normals. 
So if I want, so if I am to select everything, smooth selected normals, then you've got all these like things that you can select here, like how much you want to. So I've kind of set this somewhere where I feel like I want it. So this is like with it smooth. So you'll see that it's starting to, it's still got this kind of joltiness about it. But that's just what you want to do is just try adjusting this smooth factor each time and try and work out what works best. So if I press smooth again, give it a second. So now we've now got quite a smooth transition going across the face. So now you might find that some areas you don't really like like this. So this is where you're kind of going to go in now, bit by bit, and start editing these manually. So this is where it gets very time consuming because now you can use this gizmo here and rotate this. So if I rotate this slightly this way, rotate this slightly this way. These, I'm getting a weird triangle going on here because of these normals here. And sometimes you might find the reason you're getting these jagged edges is because of how your triangles are aligned. So you can actually change these by cutting a face like so. And you see how the normal suddenly changed. And then if I were to select this and press X and dissolve edges, this remains the same. But that's because each quad is made up of triangles. I think I mentioned this earlier, but each quad is made up of triangles. So by cutting the quad, you, you're realigning the triangle within it. So again, if I cut this in half, all of a sudden this is now smoothed out. And if you dissolve that. So a lot of this is down to how your geometry is set up. So if you have some artifacting, you're going to have to just get in and start cutting things. Now you can see we've got a bit of an issue here. And this is because this tr this vert here is probably rotated too much. So go back into the normal editor. Oh. Normal editor. And then I'm going to have to rotate this slightly. Try that. So what's actually happened here is this verts the complete wrong direction. I think I've rotated it so much that it's gone all the way round. So I need to flip this. So it's pointing out. And then we should be able to fix it now by putting it in the right position. So now We've still got this a bit here, but we should be able to just keep editing this until it's in a better place. So we've still got it a little bit. And the main issue here now is this one here next to it is a bit too much. So you can spend a long time trying to fix these. You're always going to have certain positions like so where this isn't correct. And you might want to actually set this vert here to do this. And you might not want this little kind of triangle area here. You're just going to have to try and work out which best look which looks best to you. And that's basically it for this setup for normals. It's not too complicated, especially if you use this sphere to set them up initially and then use this plane to set them up initially. It's It makes it a lot easier to kind of get a base to work with. You might actually want to, before you start doing any of this, is if you've got abnormal, select everything and do spherize normal. So everything's a sphere to begin with and then go in and manually edit using this sphere here and copy and paste copy and paste set up your planes then go into the normal editor and smooth everything out maybe do that kind of sphere eyes i did for the center 
and then it's just a case of then slowly going through your light trying to find the problematic areas you have like here still a bit of a problem and then fixing those manually and that's about it for this video so if you enjoyed what you saw leave a comment leave a like it helps me make more videos like this special thanks to my patrons who have helped me along the way so if you want to support there's a link in the description there so you can also join them and uh maybe you didn't see the last video so if you want to learn a bit about normals, some easy setups, you want to learn how to set up an outline as well and all that kind of stuff, set up your shaders, then press the video link here. And if you want to do none of that, would you kindly bugger off? Maybe.